Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. That same day Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. The Gospel of the Lord. Sisters and brothers in Christ, grace to you and peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Just for today, let's set aside the interpretation of this parable we just heard. We understand why the evangelists included it. The early believers struggled with their efforts, with the truth that sometimes when they proclaimed the good news, it seemed to bear fruit and people joined Christ's way. And sometimes no matter how faithfully they shared the good news, it wasn't received. It didn't take root. Jesus' interpretation helps face such frustration. But Jesus didn't tell parables that had only one interpretation. When he needed to speak clearly, he did. Love one another as I have loved you is direct speech and doesn't need much interpretation. But some truths about God and the world aren't easily packaged in a simple teaching. So Jesus told parables, stories, pictures revealing deeper truths about the wisdom of God. Every parable Jesus told is a jewel when, if held to the light and turned differently or held into a different light, reveals further facets of God's wisdom and truth. This particular interpretation here is only one facet. Today, we heard this parable alongside God's word to the prophet Isaiah. In that light, when we turn it carefully, we find grace in these words that we might not have found before. God declares a promise to Isaiah that transforms our faith. God says, you see the rain and the snow that fall to the ground and water the earth and make life sprout and grow? That's like my word that I speak into the world. Like rain and snow, it will always bear fruit. My word that goes forth from my mouth shall not return to me empty, says the Lord. 
but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. How have we forgotten this? This gives hope to our attempts to be obedient and faithful. Confidence to our footsteps and our voices. Encouragement to our hearts. God's word will do what God wants it to do, always. Now, what does this say about Jesus' parable then? Suddenly, what we thought was certain about this story isn't. In Isaiah's light, God's word is the rain and the snow, not the seeds. And if God's word always nurtures the fruit God needs, can we hear this parable as not about the visible harvests at all? Isaiah's light focuses us on the sower, not the harvests. Jesus describes a sower who walks across the ground, throwing seed everywhere and anywhere. This sounds careless, but this is how seed was then sown. Today, agriculture has eliminated most of the obvious problems of this sower. Farmers have long removed the rocks, killed the weeds, and prepared the ground. And none of them for centuries has run their planter over the road. But what if the sower isn't careless after all? What if the sower knows the birds will eat the seed off of the path? The sun will wilt the plants growing in rocky ground. The weeds will challenge the new growth in many places and still plants seeds there. If God's word always bears the fruit God wants, always accomplishes what God intends, we know two things about the path, the rocks, and the weeds. We know that we can't see how planting any seeds there is helpful or good. And we know that God sees somehow that it is important to plant there and that one day God's rain and snow will bring forth the fruit that God needs. This has profound implications on our lives in the world and on our own journeys of faith. We struggle with the crises of this world and our participation in them, but maybe we have forgotten Isaiah's promise. Systemic racism, the devastation of climate change and the oppression and injustice it causes, wicked systems that broaden the gap between rich and poor and deepen it almost without conscious thought or effort, evil distribution of resources that forces millions to die of hunger every year. We struggle to know how to turn these things into paths of healing. But God says, my word will accomplish what I purpose and succeed in that for which I send it. Do we not believe this? Hasn't God promised over and over again to draw all races and nations together? Has God not only called us to do justice and care for the poor, but hasn't God also promised repeatedly, I myself will care for the poor and the needy. I will feed the hungry. We cannot read God's scriptures without hearing promises of God to heal this world, to be the shepherd of God's flock. And so, yes, we still do our call to serve. But we do it now in the confidence that God has promised to heal all things. God's word will bear the fruit God needs. God's reign will make that happen. We struggle with our own 
attempts to be Christ. And we also may have forgotten God's promise here, too. The more we listen to Christ, the more we realize the challenges of Christ's path. We realize our own implicit, unthinking racism, our embeddedness in a culture of capitalism that benefits us while harming others, our own sinful thoughts and words and actions, even against those whom we love. We long to be Christ, to love as Christ, to witness to Christ's love in the world, but we stumble in our Christly, self-giving love. And that sometimes leads us to despair. Have we forgotten God's promise? My word will accomplish what I purpose and will succeed in that for which I sent it. Isn't the Bible full of promises of God to change us, to make us holy? Is it not promised that we are joined to Christ's vine, that the Spirit's fruits are born in us? Has God not said through Paul that we are new children of God, a new creation? We cannot read God's scriptures without hearing God's promises to make us new, to make us Christ's love in the world. And yes, of course, we still seek to follow Christ's path, but now we do it with the confidence and hope that we will become what we were meant to be. Because God promised it. And God's word always does what God intends it to do. Seen in the light of Isaiah, this jewel Jesus gives us today reminds us that we can't always believe what we see. We look at a dead son of God hanging on a cross and can't see how God's love can heal the world. But Christ is risen, and love defeats death, and Isaiah was right. God's word will do whatever God intends. So what we think we see isn't always truth. Birds eat seeds. Rocks push plants into the sun. Weeds choke. The world rolls on. Systems root ever deeper. We fail in our efforts to be Christ. But if God's word always bears the fruit God intends, we can't be sure we're seeing what we really need to see or what's really happening. In the devastations of any of the world's problems, in our grief and frustration at our failure to faithfully be Christ in a broken world, we can't see how God is doing anything. But just because we can't see it doesn't mean it isn't happening. Just because we can't see how God will bring life out of death, hope out of despair, joy out of sorrow, doesn't mean God won't. The cross taught us that. Justice will prevail. Healing will happen in our hearts and in the world. Those who are poor will be restored. Those who are hungry will be fed. And God's healing peace will transform and heal the universe. God has promised it. The sower knows what the sower is doing, and we shouldn't be distracted just because we don't think we see results. God's word will always do what God needs it to do. This transforms everything. Even our understanding of God's grace Grace isn't needed just when we fail. Grace is our beginning. The great sower begins with grace, and our lives are born in God's grace. God's grace is the source, the font of life, the rain and snow that water the earth. All things are born in God's grace, and this changes everything. All that we fear, all that we struggle against, all our efforts to be Christ, all that work is born out of the womb of God's eternal grace and love. If we begin to walk God's path, the path of Christ, supported by God's grace, how can we fail? 
If we follow our call to heal this world, supported by God's promise, how can we fail? My word will accomplish what I purpose and succeed in that for which I sent it. That's where we always begin and end. So let's get to work. In the name of Jesus, amen.